Hey guys, this is Dorian Day and welcome to Six Sound Design Episode 1. Today I'm going to be showing you how to master deep and future house bases using Serum. This tutorial video accompanies a preset pack I'm releasing today called Future House Bases Volume 1. This is the first release from Sick Twisted Mind Studios and a partnership between myself and musician programmer Eric Carlson. Eric is joining us for today's first Six Sound Design to celebrate our release. He's going to tell you a little about the pack before I show you how I made them. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm excited for today's launch, and I think you're really going to enjoy what we have for you today and what's coming for it in the near future. Let's play part of the demo video before I show you what's included. We just got the site up this weekend. You can visit sicktwistedminds.com and see our first product, Future House Basis Volume 1. As of this video, two products are listed, the main pack and a demo pack. The main pack contains the following items. We have the cover art and demos, followed by the frames folder. This contains all the single cycle waveforms used in our specially crafted base table. Next, we have an instruction guide with the explanations of the contents of the pack, some details about the construction of the presets, as well as the usage information. Next, we have a MIDI folder with 16 MIDI files used in the creation of the audio demo. Next, the most important folder, the presets folder, with 25 presets, each of which can be transformed into near limitless variations of themselves with a turn of six pre-mapped knobs. Next is the resource folder, containing an Ableton file used to make the audio demo with a kick used in the demo and a mixing chain so you can switch between the MIDI files and presets and achieve high quality results instantly. We also include the kick separately in the resource folder and added a custom made rack for easy automation of the serum macros and four useful effects. Next, we have the wavetables used in the patches, included the specially crafted base table with 64 unique waveforms, each hand-picked to create modern and interesting tom tomers. Finally, we have the tips sheet, which explains the process Dorian went through to create these patches. I'm going to hand it back to Dorian, and he's going to walk you through the creation process, and we're going to upload the demo pack with the preset made in the video, as well as the PDFs and a few MIDI files. All right, guys, with our infomercial out of the way, let's get down to making this sound. So as was mentioned, we wrote this instruction sheet or tip sheet. And that's what we're going to be going through to start making these sounds. So the instructions start in uh, sort of explaining how you would make a normal or old school uh, base pluck um, and then as you go on it describes ways to make it more modern and um, more interesting uh, so if you look at the first tip it says lean towards sign and squares for hollow sound others for more rich or interesting timbres uh, saw and other more complex waveforms are good for FM modulation source and layer so the original um, this sound has some history uh, it was originally from like UK Garage, and then it was appropriated by Deep House and now Future House. And it's pretty much a square, hollow type sound. And to get even more of a hollowness, you use a filter that has a resonance on it. And we're going to run through that. But this is where that sound originated. And as time has gone on, and especially now with these new songs like that have been hitting the Beatport Top 10, it's uh, much more FM modulation on top of the bass sound than was originally used. And it makes it much more melodic 
And there's a number of other things that go into it that we're going to detail out. Um, so let's get that started. So I'm going to load in a, a demo table that I made. It's basically a shorter version of the base table you get with the preset pack. It has eight waves instead of 64. The first four are your standard sine, triangle, square, and saw, and then four other interesting waveforms that don't even close to represent how many waveforms and sounds you get with the table we include in the pack. So let's go with a square. And um, let's go back to our tip sheet. Next, set the amp envelope to fast attack, medium to full sustain, and medium decay with short to medium release. Now, the great majority of these patches are not at full, sus uh, full sustain or the majority of these bases when used, but you can do it if you want. It just makes it sound more pressed and less plucky. Let's start with that. Okay. Grab our next tip. After selecting a waveform, add a low pass filter and modulate the cutoff with an envelope. The cutoff should be set fairly low and the modulation depth should be between 25 and 50%. Gotta make it unidirectional, turn on the filter. All right, we're starting to get the sound. Next, uh, set the filter envelope to fast attack, medium sustain, and medium decay with short release. Typically, the uh, sustain on the envelope or the volume envelopes higher than the cutoff, at least in a lot of the patches I analyzed. All right, what's next? From here, you can begin to add unison voices and hear the impact on the sound. This generally adds powerfulness, um, powerfulness. If the sound is too sharp, try adding some ran randomness to the phase retriggering, which will smooth out the sound. To further smooth out the sound, add a slight bit of detune. Make sure to reduce the stereo width of your detuned vo voices to around 50%. And if you hear a phasing zapping noise, you need to increase the voice randomness. So let's add that. And this is going to be the first macro we create. And it's a really useful macro on the presets that I created. And I call it the blur knob. Bring the detune about slightly below halfway. Increase unison voices to five. We're going to be adding another oscillator soon. So I'm just doing this pre. Also, before I... Um, start adding any detune. Let's listen to the f impact of randomness. It 
it smooths out the sound because the phase ch starts at a different point on the square each time. You can see that yellow um, highlighting. That's the area from which it can choose. At full random, it can choose from anywhere. The sound gets much sharper when you reduce the triggering. And it has an impact even on one voice. Though it's not as noticeable. If we increase our voices. you can hear the impact it has on the sound. Okay. Turn our filter back down. Let's see. So important note, for rich, interesting bass plucks, the high end must be very rich in harmonics, even annoying without a filter. So try turning off the filter and checking if the high end is rich, full, and bright. If not, try adding some more oscillators. Harmonic rich waveforms, such as saws and FM generated waveforms, are really good to layer on top of your bass sound. You can stack them in unison octaves or even intervals like a fifth, which, you can, which can add a melodic element to your bass timbre. Uh, you can try adding a sub if detuning has weakened your other sounds. So we're going to start working with that right now. So I'm going to import this table demo. And I'm just going to stick with a square for now. Send it to the filter. Okay, next I'm going to go in here and soften this one with the filter grid size. And I'm going to increase it by seven semitones. Also, I forgot to drop these by an octave, which is useful. I like to keep my base presets one register below um, zero, just so that they're all uniform. So you can hear the plug coming in. Increasing the blur. Gotta name it. All right, so, and then we're gonna add a sub also. One octave below, send it to the filter. Send the noise too. I, I prefer a pulse. At least I did while making a lot of them. It's a little sharper, you can hear. All right, let's go back to the tips. If you want an extra percussive attack, add enveloped white noise with a very short snapped envelope. This will add a bite and organic randomness to your sound if done subtly. All right, so I do that with LFO2. I make an envelope, and this is a really cool and powerful trick. I attach this to the uh, filter cutoff as well. Just a little bit. And then I decrease 
interval of two a little and begin to balance them out. Turn on my noise. I used ARP circuit for a lot of these. Send this to level. All right, now we're gonna create the byte knob. I attach the byte knob to the filter just a little bit. I attach it to the envelope rate going backwards so that as I increase byte, the filter byte increases, or I mean the, um, the length of the envelope increases so you get a longer thus envelope on the filter and increases the amount of time of the brightness to put it very simply. Um, next, I multiply LFO2 on the noise by macro2, which is the byte knob. And then it goes one more place. Let's see, I think it's in the instructions. Okay, yep, it increases the FM amount. So I'm going to set this up even though we're not going to use it yet. There. All right, there's byte. Next, I make a cutoff knob so I can make adjustments to the filter without having to increase FM. And then finally, we attach envelope three to wavetable position with a very short uh, or a very small amount of positive modulation. And we make this sh um, envelope really short and fast. Increase the attack and pull that all the way up. And you can see it bouncing on the waveform. Okay, and then we take macro four and, and actually this decay is too long like that. And we put it on decay and we increase just a little bit so that as we turn the knob, we get more decay. Next, we multiply envelope three wavetable position by macro four so that it controls the amount of enveloping. And I believe that does it. It's twisted. Let's bring in some MIDI files.
minutes, I was having a small crisis trying to figure out what that weird top end buzzing sound was. And you have to make sure that if you use LFOs that you switch them to either trigger or envelope mode. Envelope is the best if you only want them to launch one time. So switch to that and you can hear the difference. You hear that dirt gone and I was, you know, could not figure out what it was and there it is. So you have to remember to set this. I forgot and it caused me problems. All right, so where were we? Let's look at our tip sheet because I'm a little lost. So we added our white noise. At this point, try some different kinds of filters. You know, each one sounds different. If you and if you don't hear the difference, listen forever until you do because they really do sound different. This one sounds a little warmer to me. This one a little cleaner and punchier, a little snappier. I mean, you can really hear it in sort of like the mid section. There's more of a buzz in the first ones than the second groupings. But two that are really good to try are the German and French. French one is you can like almost almost like a format filter, but not really. It just has these weird peaks. It adds some like orderly harmonic distortion. I'm gonna stick with German for this thing. So what do we have next on the list? So if you want more aggressive sound, try adding some form of saturation or distortion. This will bring out the snap of the filter and emphasize the harmonic content, but don't overdo it unless you want a heavy distortion. Uh, and even in those cases, try the white, uh, wet dry knob. Let's switch MIDI files. So you can see how easy it is to change the sound just by changing the wavetable knobs. Now the demo only comes with eight, but the ones in the presets come with 64.
All right, let's see what's next on the tip list. Oh. I guess we should actually add some saturation instead of just playing with the wavetable knobs. I'm going to go back to what we were. Sorry, I got lost for a second there. It's way too much fun to tweak these. Um, I never reduced the width on the oscillators when I added detune. That's important. You know, having your stereo width too wide is not good if you want a really high quality mix or you have to do it selectively and not on the whole frequency spectrum. So in the FX unit, we can bring up to some distortion. So you can hear how the distortion kind of makes the filter snap um, sound more of like a bite than a pop. I mean, the filter on its own sounds it's like it's like grasping for something. Whereas with the distortion, it adds like, like a driving force, like it's pushing, it's driving you forward. Mix with the dry wet. So we're going to stick with the soft. Now, I like the soft clipping because it doesn't it doesn't take away from the filter so much. You can you can pre or post filter if you want. I'm not going to. I'm going to use the whole thing. this point, you know, try experimenting with EQ and compression to see if it improves your sound. Try EQing all over the frequency spectrum. Uh, just experiment. Listen. It's better to do it at this point after you have some of your bass sound going. Sorry, I just noticed how loud the master was. So if you want to go back to a more organic or woody sound, just drop the saturation. Or maybe we'll just map that to bite. That's not something I've done yet. Seems like a good choice. to the preview. Okay, so next, if you want to start doing FMing uh, to get future bass, it's really super simple. And we already have it set up when we set up the envelope. Um, 
twisted. What am I doing? Where does bite go? This is wrong. I set that up wrong. What is one, two, three, macro two, LFO two. Okay, I, I have to set LFO two to uh, table position. I have to check up on this one really quick. Let's open another serum. So this is on two things, noise, what modulates? Okay, it's just the knob, I am I was wrong. I do know what I'm doing. Okay, bytes, why is there so many? There's one extra than on that patch, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, we added it to the distortion. All right, here we go. Set it to FM from A. wrong with that there's something not right Interesting. So you can hear, um, now that this oscillator is turned down, the impact of byte on B. Well, there you go. That's the beginnings of the Future House bass sound. Add some reverb.
can't, I don't really have my headphones on. It's kind of hard for me to hear how loud the reverb is. So hopefully it's at a good level. Let's bring in that kick drum. All right, well, there you have it. Here, I have a gecko, so let's see what that sounds like. Cycled weird. So from there, what else can you do? Well, from here, you should go back to the beginning and consider each step again and try and tweak. And, you know, once you have your MIDI and have a sound, you need to go and make changes and make adjustments. And this is the sound design process. It's iterative. You got to go back sometimes. Um, here are some miscellaneous tweaks and tips that we'll go over. You can add an LFO to pitch of one of the oscillators with a depth of about 0.5 semitones or 50 cents and a very low LFO rate. And this has a noticeable impact on the sound. It rounds it out and blurs it and adds randomness and an organic feeling to the sound. So let's kill the FM for now.
if I bypass. I think it's hard to hear with blur up, so you have to turn blur down. You can hear when I bypass it that the plucks start to sound the same on every pluck, but if you add it back. The pluck bounces around a little bit. Okay, next tip. Add portamento and velocity modulation for added character. We're out of modulation slots, so that's a tip. Add it to drive and cut off. Not very much, just a little bit. We can do portamento though. Adds a slide to the sound. Um, we can replace the LFO on pitch with an envelope. We'll just use, try LFO too. Forward modulation. And not very much. I mean, you can try up to a semitone. It adds a little bit of a punch to the beginning, and if I increase bite, listen as I decrease it. And back up. There's just this slight bite and punch added to the beginning of the sound. All right, try multiple envelopes on filter cutoff with different modulation depths and envelope settings to get extra control. We did that. Envelope two is on cutoff and so is LFO two. You can use an oscillator with P uh, pulse width modulation to make a blurry detune sound without using multiple voices or detune. Um, Let's see if I can manage this with, oh, what can I delete? Uh, I'm gonna delete the noise. Switch this to PMW, PWM, add this LFO. So at low rates, you get this like detuning sound and a randomness. But if you turn it all the way up, the sound begins to start or begins to start sounding aggressive and chaotic. Ring modulation can add an interesting metallic uh, ringing quality to the bass. So let's go back to our demo table.
and we grab ring modulation from um, the warp menu and it steals away our FM. Except for I did AM, I need RM. So you can hear it takes away some of like the the harmonics from the seventh. And it adds bite and punch to an extent. And it's totally totally dependent on the waveform you're using to be to remodulate. Okay. Um, vibrato makes the bass blur, warp, and war warble, and adds randomness and a pressing hollow sound. So I mean that's pretty much LFO on the pitch. So I mean, but if your synth has a vibrato knob or something, um, and you're not using Serum, then you can try that. Uh, unison and phaser triggering are extremely important for snappy sound when used in combination with filter and saturation. So let's check that out. So let's listen to the filter as we decrease the unison voices. So this is a very subtle difference. It's more noticeable on other synths, but I wanted to include that. And it also is really dependent on the saturation type you have. So maybe that's a more accurate statement. So if I increase the mix all the way. So you can hear the ever slightest increase in the punch as you increase the voices, especially with the blur all the way down so that the randomness of the phase is zero. Next, um, an envelope on wavetable position for extra interest. We did that. It's controlled with the twisted knob where envelope three is controlling the wavetable position, but we have the twisted knob to um, control how much of that is happening. You can see the bounce start to go away as we turn the knob all the way down and return. And finally, and that has a crazy impact on the sound. If you watch the um, run through videos, which I'll talk about in a couple seconds, um, you can see all of these in actions running through the presets. And I talk more about what you get. Finally, try switching out the bass oscillator waveform um, with a, something harmonically rich, like a format waveform. And you've seen a, a, me do that throughout. And uh, I've gotten some crazy results so far from this. Um, 
Let's see, maybe I'll bring up my Instagram. Uh, you can hear, and also this is a good time to introduce, uh, if you want to hear what I'm working on in Serum that doesn't really fit into a video yet, come and check this out. Check out my Instagram. And this is what I made yesterday by accident while making the demo song. So as you can hear, um, the actual presets with the crazy tables that are in them, you can go from a you know a buzzy synth sound to an organic electric bass to a screaming guitar synth, just with the turn of these knobs, um, and then you can totally change how that sounds by switching the wavetable positions. Um, and that pretty much does it. So this is how you make deep and future house bass sounds in Serum. This is all the tricks I know. If I learn anything new, I'll make a follow-up video. If you're interested in learning more about the preset packs um, or how the presets work, check out the video that I'm going to be probably linking in this on the screen and putting in the description. Or you can check out the Sick Twisted Minds website or uh, YouTube channel to check out the run through where I run through a bunch of the MIDI files and run through all the controls and talk a little more in depth about what you get with the preset pack. Um, and that does it. If you want these, check out sixtwistedminds.com. They'll be up at the same time as the video. If you have any questions, leave comments. Uh, hope this was helpful. Thanks.